low SGD. Uh, last, I'll put the link in the description, but last night I posted a video and was looking at old photos of Alante Tambo in Peru, comparing to comparing those to what how the site looks now and just uh, distinguishing the modern restorations versus uh, what's described as um, you know prim crude primitive ink primitive crude Inca work versus advanced megalithic lost society pre-cataclysm as they go but uh, so this was one of the photos and so just to review quickly that portion because uh, I put out a question and, and got some uh, I got an excellent response from Peter from Norway thank you very much he grabbed a he found a couple of photos which answer the question but so here's a photo the important one and now I've placed that old photo and you can see it uh, on top of the wall as it is now and we'll just start pointing out some of this you know what's not very well thought out maybe um, repair work uh, maybe the repair work in the yellow sections might have been advised for for stability but there in the blue circle you can I'm not sure why they deemed that that was where it was they've clearly moved the stones and placed some bits in between but then I showed this so we can see the, the, the wall there and the mountains um, there in the back and I just use those outline the there just to show because again you compare that to the photo you can see the mountains there in the background and just to highlight and there we can see that wall but looking from the side all right wherever the x is is that particular face on that cornerstone of the wall but then i went back to this photo and what i noticed was that there you can notice that section well that doesn't match up with the background so but there, there was something there a structure because even from the resolution compared to the mountains in the distance it just doesn't match up and okay so comparing those okay so obviously that's not the mountain there was some sort of structure there and something large was there where the arrows pointed to you can also notice the damage on the wall i'll get into it more later but quickly Technically, you could call this granite. It's actually rhyolite, but there's different grades of granite, and rhyolite is in different grades as well. But generally speaking, rhyolite is uh, easier to cut and and to work. There's a, so the Mohs hardness, but also its Vickers hardness would be different because rhyolite is. Uh, what's the, I think the term that the geologists use is vuggy, in that it's uh, the way it cooled down there are a lot of micro cracks in there and it's it's very it's prone to damage uh, they don't use rhyolite in construction or not very much but then here in Sydney there are some beautiful old buildings that do use rhyolite but that might be a high grade rhyolite so all basalt is not exactly the same or granite's not exactly the same and well, rhyolite is an, another example but um, that would all that it's rhyolite and I would probably be thinking it's on the lower scale of quality uh, because of the way that this was anyway let's just so there's a close-up you can see how it's I think it's spalling I'm not sure the, the flaking the damage discoloration that's been done to that section of wall which matches where this missing piece of wall was just to highlight that and you can also see some um, similar damage there some would say that this was the evidence of a cataclysm and a solar flare it's just curious to me that the solar f flare cataclysm always knew to target you know it avoided <laughs> it avoided the, the the bedrock and everywhere else but it you know it, whether it's in egypt it targeted a statue uh or it targeted a, a particular piece of wall it's very very sentient apparently very vind vindictive the sun doesn't like uh stonework for some reason but you know it'll three feet away it'll leave the bedrock uh undamaged but anyway so there we see Alante Tambo from an aerial view. And just so again we're locating ourselves, you can see that particular stone. This was all covered in the last video, so if you have seen it, I'm sorry, but maybe someone's going to see the second part, so they wouldn't uh, understand where I'm coming from. And I was, uh, I made a, uh, luckily no one took me up on the wager, but I made, I bet that 
these stones there, circled in white, uh, were part of a casing r running along the side of that wall. Well, it turns out it's not. I was uh, wrong on that. Um, and so, no, those stones definitely not. Okay, but so that's what was covered before. Now, this is uh, Peter W. from Norway. Again, thanks again. He sent me a couple of uh, pictures. And I think this one's 1910, Hiram Bigham. Well, the next one is, but either way, now here's another uh, from a similar period. But again, you can see on the side, I'm not sure if the cursor is going to show on the screen grab, but you can see this wall in higher detail. It is not those large single piece um, blocks. It's clearly made from smaller pieces, um, more standard masonry. Here's another picture. Uh, this is Hiram Bingham. This is the Hiram Bingham photo, but this one's more telling because, again, if you, well, you can see this part hasn't been, unlike the other photos, this hasn't been cropped off. And from the outline of it, you can, it's clearly not those larger stones with the nicer corners. It's a more standard type sort of masonry, you know, almost like modern brick, you know, with, um, well, stones instead of bricks and, and mortar design. So, yes, there was a wall there. I was half right, but two thirds wrong in that it was not those pieces that have fallen off. So let's just compare all those three together. I'll just trim them down so we can, you know, from those three together, we can make out uh, and get, get what you can see what's happening. So the two blue arrows, you can see that, yes, there was a portion of wall there. So it's not the mountain. You can even see them in the central picture. You can see the outline of the mountains in the background and zoom in and highlight that piece it's only a snippet of it but it's enough to see that this was a not a monolith large stone wall it was more of a uh, construction as we'll see in other parts of Alante Tambo so again that's where we are there's a comparison highlighted in yellow that's where that portion of wall will be and uh, so I was uh, half right but two thirds wrong so luckily no one took the bet and then just to compare where that wall was and the uh, damage and discoloration on that portion of wall there definitely not those stones could not, could not have been those but that wall which we saw that snippet we could see it was a uh, you know sort of you know boulders and you know, almost like brick style brick and mortar construction well, they're again now outlined in yellow. You can see that there is this wall, and that wall runs for, runs right to the top of a mountain. And there's another little fortress outpost right at the the very peak of the mountain. And so there's a barrier wall which runs all along that um, from the ramp right up to the peak. And that that we'll see a picture of how those walls are constructed. Well, that's how that particular wall was that I pointed out is now missing. And so where that yellow arrow is, you can see, uh, well, there's a gap there in the wall, and there's a reason uh, why that would be there as well. But uh, again, thanks to David Fornley, he sent me an um, excellent series of uh, from Peru, uh, excellent photos. And so that's at Alante Tambo. That's where that yellow arrow is pointing to in that gap in the wall. It's a doorway which leads through, because this, we'll show you in a second, Alante Tambo was an important fortress, uh, administrative center. So this portion, where you can see the, the polygonal walls and the great wall, well, they're essentially just retaining walls, but in this part, there was living quarters, like proper built, you know, uh, workspace administrative centers like an actual building to be lived in as a you know, as opposed to essentially retaining walls okay so that's where we are now the important part is um, okay now we can outline all of the road network whether from the valley or the mountain roads are all funneled and driven through and passed directly through that administrative center where the inhabitable buildings are there in Alante Tambo. So this fortress controls the road network along the valley and up into the mountains uh, to, 
towards Cusco from Machu Picchu. To the left, you're going to go down the mountain, down the uh, valley, to eventually you'll get to Machu Picchu. If you go to the right, you're going to go towards the Inca capital at Cusco. And all the roads were, were funneled in and controlled here. So this is, you know, it's an obvious, it's just, a, it's almost like Minas Tirith in Lord of the Rings. There's this spur coming off the mountain and it just controls the roads and the and line of sight as well. Now, okay, so there in the yellow circle is Alante Tambo. But notice how, again, let's go to the next one. That direction you're going up to Cusco. In the other area, you're going down towards Machu Picchu, but you also have this valley which um, leads off at the top of the image there. So all the roads are all funneled into Alante Tambo, and even on the opposite side of the valley, uh, there are uh, there are other smaller outposts, but they're in direct line of sight. So from that fortress there, you can see down the valley towards Machu Picchu, up the valley towards Cusco, as well as this other major valley which leads off along the top of the image there. Now, Alante Tambo was also in, well, roads, communications, uh, any messages, any you know, everything's going to be reported and seen through there, and there are those walls and forts to you know, basically stop traffic, smugglers, spies, what enemy, whatever you want to call them. But Alante Tambo, and that's just one of them, has multiple fountains, freshwater fountains there. So again, has has the runners and are coming along. Will it be the fortress is there? It's also a good place to uh, water the uh, the llamas or the runners which are moving along through these. You know, the the road network is just like with ancient Rome. The Inca road network was just huge fantastic extended you know, almost from southern chile all the way up to colombia on on the east and the west side of the andes mountains all right so but well why would the well, you think oh there's fountains but there's a river there why would they be uh this be necessary another well let's take a note so there you can see the yellow arrows pointed to the fortress part well the river that runs here the um uh, Urabamba, I always get the well, that's the river running through there. And if we zoom in, this river runs all but dry for parts of the year until the smoke snow melt comes along. So it's not a navigable, all you, you couldn't navigate it with rafts all year round. And for part of the year, it's you wouldn't get your feet wet crossing. So again, I'll come eventually working towards the video in regards to how did they move the stones, where were the actual quarries that type of thing and the question well how did they get it across the river well the rivers you can cross the river at the right time of year and not get your feet wet so there's no issue mystery um, about how did they cross the river it's it's dry and but also in, in regards to water so that's the importance of the fountain so even though they're up there in the mountains do you think there'd be no shortage of water well sometimes there would be and that's why those springs are very important especially where the road network comes together. Okay, so it's perfectly positioned fortress. It's a spur coming off the corner of the mountains, controls two valleys on one side and, and the other valley going down. The other fortress, like the mountaintop fortress on both sides of the valley are in direct line of sight. So even the roads that aren't funneled through there, they can, it just controls a huge area, just, just a perfect place for the fortress and even just the shape of that spur that comes out there it's just you couldn't you'd be hard pressed to design a better uh fortress if you were you know, building the earth from scratch so there in the top left that's where alante tambo controls approaches to the capital of cusco and there down towards the bottom left you see where cusco the capital was now i've also highlighted a place tambo mache well, this too controls the approaches to the capital of Cusco. There's a road. So from the north, Tambo Mache, we'll show you in a moment. Well, it's got the same things that are happening here. It's just on a smaller scale. So it too has these freshwater fountains. Um, controls a very important road coming into the capital. Just like Cusco has, uh, sorry, Cusco, uh, Alante Tambo has freshwater fountains 
controlling the approaches in all directions. Okay, now here's a picture of uh, the most, um, when they talk about the polygonal walls at Alante Tambo, well, that, that's the area where, you, where we have these walls there. Okay, now we look at Tambo Mache, and well, there's a, apart from the fountain, the fact it's just you know, perfectly positioned on the road, well, there are other similarities, and so I'll put those two together, and you might sort of notice the uh, similarities happening um, already. Okay, so we start with the top tier. On the top we see Alante Tambo underneath Tambo Mache and he, well, the trapezoid niches, but more importantly is the style of stonework. It's more rectangular. Now, they're, not, they're not perfect squares and there are a few six-sided or five-sided, but almost 90% um, you know, of them more are four-sided blocks. Uh, squarish, very similar style and even the size with Alante Tambo and the top tier. We go down the second tier down on, a, on Tambo Mache and the middle tiers of Alante Tambo and again we put them together. Now we see a clearly, you know, it's more, the, the vast majority of stones are polygonal in that they've got five, six so not four-sided, they have multiple sides, and again, it's a very similar construction style, construction quality, even the arrangement of them. Okay, now we go to the bottom tier of Volante Tambo and uh, Tambo Macho. Uh, I've just highlighted, there's an area there which possible restoration, these small blocks, I couldn't find an old photo of that particular uh, area, so uh, that's possibility that, that the lowest quality there, which you can see, is a modern restoration preservation work but the other parts you can see it's polygonal work but the quality is going down and on the bottom photos you can see those lower tiers of tambo match as well it's polygonal stone but again the quality is different okay Oop. now we might as well go back to now uh, now i'd be thinking uh, that you would begin from the bottom and, and work up. You know, if you're building, a not not necessarily the case, but probably you know the lower work is at the bottom, which I'd think you know, because of the the fountain um, being so important that that would have been done first, and then you build up and backwards. Doesn't have to be like that, but I would uh, I'd say uh, probabilities. So again, the the lower work is probably older and on the bottom and then we move up to higher quality work but that argument to the side i know that that creates some issues but it's more of a similarity of the style and the design there's you know some sort of um uh, meaning probably you know probably there but i just wanted to include that in this video as well because it doesn't sort of sit in what i want to do um in regards to uh, transportation and stone cutting and the quarries and so forth, so I thought I'd, you know, um, put those in in here and with that earlier correction where the that missing part of wall of the wall is not those uh, large single single blocks. It is a, a more standard masonry type, you know, sort of brick style of wall, and how that again matches with the uh, the administrative or the living port of the court, you know, the, the buildings for business, politics, living, cooking, or whatever you want to call it. So again, as a when we talk, so whether it's Alante Tambo, um, not exclusively, but gen this high quality polygonal work is really retaining walls for the most part. Now in places like Machu Picchu, uh, there are buildings with that, but again, they tend to be very small and they could not build ceilings, stone ceilings. They had to uh, use other methods to put uh, roofs on. And this just when it regards to you know, megalithic and polygonal work, uh, I would, I would say a vaulted ceiling, which you know is a stone ceiling high up in the air on thin walls, is a, just a much higher, like 
just on a different league of quality of, of engineering and masonry as opposed to beautifully made ret retaining walls. Uh, is, is there any you know, supposedly megalithic pre-cataclysm ceiling? Well, they, they apparently couldn't build roofs um, out of stone. Very, very, they just remains walls and block and, and block and lintel construction for the most part as well. But thought that this, apart from that uh, correction, again, thanks to uh, Peter W from Norway for uh, finding those photos, which have the uh, better quality showing that extension as it, as it was from the old photos. Okay, so that was one, again, thanks to Peter and the one on the top right as well. Also you can see the uh, graffiti that's been done in there, that's been cleaned off. So if someone's rubbed down, scrubbed down the wall, that's not painted on, I believe that that was been scratched in. So now versus then there's been, you know, the material has been removed. And uh, I'm trying to remember to put the links in the description because these um, high quality photos are from David Fornley and he's um, posted his collections on on the net so they're not he hasn't just he's made them available to anyone who's interested so photos such as these and uh, the fountains and so forth so excellent collection I put the I, I made a slideshow of uh, David Fornley's photos and in I'll try to link that. I'll try to remember to link those because then in there you have the links to his uh, on where you can access those photos online and go through them in detail um, and at your own leisure. So, yes, the wall definitely was there on the on the side, but it was not uh, the rhyolite or the, the grey. Uh, there's red rhyolite. There's also a, a dark grey stone from the same quarry. I'm not sure if that's a rhyolite or another type of granite but those blocks no they did they were not on the wall formally and also just a comparison of the fortress position of Alante Tome by the way that controls a road network and that design style uh, the fountains um, spring water uh, clear wa fresh water at Tambo Mache again so another David uh, Fornley photo but so yeah just a add-on from the video I posted yesterday and so wall was there but it was not a mon you know, large um, block wall it was more your sort of standard um, stone wall and, and mud construct uh, mortar construction and also the comparisons between Tampa Mache and Alante Tambo as well. All right, so with that, uh, cheers and have a good one.